Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust It Off, that podcast where only poison-themed songs survive till the future. Because this week we watched The End of the World. Written by Russell T. Davies. Directed by Euros Lin. Or and, Euros. <laughs> I don't know. And aired on April 2nd, 2005. Uh, one day off of April Fool's Day. <laughs> what did it end on April Fool's Day? He's like, just kidding, guys. Doc Who's not actually back. We just made one episode. <laughs> Instead, we're rebroadcasting Dimensions in Time. <laughs> <laughs> the next week, we'll be rebroadcasting Underworld. <laughs> Everybody's favorite cereal. Hope you all enjoy the new season of Doctor Who. <laughs> no, no. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, yeah, and also, unfortunately, they didn't use uh, the one song I think of when somebody says the end of the world, which is that R.E.M. song, which is just called <laughs> The End of the World, I think, or it's The End of the World as we know it. Um, yeah, I think I know that song. Yeah, I mean, it's like one of the only hits i was gonna say one of their biggest hits but they have like three so yeah maybe that would have been two on the head although obviously this episode didn't stray away from being a little obvious at points yeah well i mean it's not like using pop songs is like well i don't know if it's a good decision i was gonna say it's not a good decision in any way but you know maybe not i don't know i didn't mind in it in this story so it was kind of weird when everyone was dying and they were playing toxic (laughs) by uh, i think britney spears it is by britney spears and uh well i just learned last week that billy piper who plays rose it was sort of like a britney spears type figure yeah so kind of weird they didn't use one of her songs but yeah. I, I don't know how many of her songs were hits. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found out she was a pop star by accident like a couple of years back. Mm. <laughs> anyway. anyway. Yeah, it starts with a recap of the last episode. But it doesn't tell you it's a recap. It just starts with all this footage. Well, the thing is, if you watched any TV at all, really, you'd kind of pick up that it's a recap because there's like all these cuts and yeah. the music doesn't really fit so you're like okay it's a recap but then they start going into material that's that's new yeah. in this episode but it's still in the recap style so that was pretty weird <laughs> like if i didn't know any better or if i had like jumped on with this episode or something i would have thought that all of these things happened in the last episode like them getting to the spaceship rose being like all right let's go to the future and they go 100 years in the future and then ten thousand, and then Five billion. To five point five slash Apple slash twenty six. <laughs> yeah, would have thought all that happened in the previous episode, but it didn't. Yeah, well, surprise. Well, so the BBC logo shows up on screen like when the new material starts. So I guess that's supposed to signify this is the new material. But if you didn't know that, it would just be the BBC logo. Yeah, yeah. the The new stuff actually comes after the intro, so I guess that's what it is but or no no i mean sorry the the new yeah. stuff comes before that so. oh yeah yeah um anyway so the new stuff is the doctor and rose they're in the tardis and the doctor's like spinning a wheel or something and yeah he has to he has to um, spin the wheel to set the time I guess. and I don't know. pump some sort of mechanism or something to get the tardis to work so that's new gotta pump up the bike tires <laughs> in this tardis <laughs> make sure those bike tires are ready to go Maybe that's why the ninth doctor is so aggravated all the time. <laughs> He's got to do all this to do this before. The damn TARDIS breaking down all the time. It's, it is an ancient TARDIS, uh, even more so now than when the show started. I think like even the third or fourth doctor was like, yeah, it's like way out of date. Yeah, when the, I think the in Invasion of Time was when they first revealed that like, hey, this is an extremely old model that we don't use anymore. <laughs> so. That's great. Anyway, then we get the title sequence, and then we get uh, they're, they're in the future, and the Doc's like, this is the last day of Earth. It's going to get destroyed today. Yeah, heat death. The Doc just says that they built, like, a shield around Earth so that they... The heat sp- shield. They're bringing back the heat shield. <laughs> this episode was kind of an homage to, like, uh, a story you would see in the classic era, like maybe in the fourth Doctor's era. Sort of. Yeah, kind of. Like, all these ambassadors and people on this ship. 
and really quick station. cuts you would never see in the classic <laughs> yeah. series though <laughs> yeah a lot of pretty decent CGI you never see in the classic series, too. Yeah, apparently they blew their entire se- <laughs> uh, season's effect budget on this episode because yeah. there was so much CG in this episode when, alone. When they started introducing the aliens, I was like, wow, they probably just blew the entire budget on creating these aliens. And then when they saw the CG, I was like, yeah, I guess they just blew it, blew it all on the CG, too. Yep. <laughs> all on this episode, so it's all downhill from here for this season. <clears throat> anyway, that's that's what's going on on this ship. Um, the doctor and Rose are confronted by um, the steward, who's like, "Hey, where are your passes?" And the doctor reveals that he has another super convenient do anything type item, like the sonic screwdriver, which is a piece of paper that shows people what they want to see. Yeah, but I like this one way better than the sonic because it avoids all of those situations where the doctor shows up and they immediately arrest him and they spend twenty minutes trying to get the doctor involved in the plot somehow. Yeah, I guess that's true, <clears> but. And, I mean, the psychic paper is used a lot more sporadically than the sonic screwdriver. I think the 12th Doctor has only used it, like, twice that I can remember in his three seasons, so... Well, that's nice. They really only use it when they're like, we need to get the Doctor involved in the plot as quick as possible. Yeah, I don't have as much time to waste as in the classic show. Yeah. So they meet all the ambassadors who are... Well, not ambassadors, really, just guests who are here to watch the... (laughs) destruction of earth for some reason they're all like really really happy that the earth is gonna get destroyed today well what i got um maybe this is wrong but what i i got this from the dialogue later is that all these different species were descendants of species that arose on earth like we have the last human then we have the tree lady jabe and there were the other ones too so maybe they were all originally from earth um, um, the face of Bo is unique in his species, as you'll find out later. He's a recurring character, and by recurring, I mean he shows up like once a season. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, he's kind of not that interesting of a character. He's just a head in a vat. In this episode, huh. uh, he gets a lot more interesting when you find out his relation to a different character. Hmm. But yeah, also, yeah, the lost human shows up, and Cassandra, she's who's paper thin. Yeah, sort of veiny. <laughs> And but apparently I thought that this was just like all right humanity has evolved into this state but apparently it was just her getting like seven hundred plastic surgeries. <laughs> yeah, Russell T said he wrote this after seeing Hollywood models keep trying to get thinner, and he's like, that would be a good idea for a, a Doctor Who villain. Apparently, yeah. Um, spoiler uh, alert. Would be a great idea for a companion. <laughs> oh God, no, I don't think so. There are a couple other pretty. There, the designs were pretty cool for all these different species. Yeah, there's um, a little blue guy in a. Chair. Max Rebo, no, yeah. no. <laughs> the Max Rebo knockoff. <laughs> uh, they're all giving gifts, and by they're all giving gifts, I mean just the tree people and the repeated meme people. Yeah, there's the repeated meme. It's like hmm, interesting name there. This is before memes were really big on the internet. This is well, before, before the internet was really big on the internet. <laughs> Not really. 2005. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, me the the concept of a meme is like not new in any way but like no it was actually uh coined by richard dawkins who's married to lala ward yeah so that's kind of a weird connection there (laughs) yeah and the word meme just means like an idea that gets passed around through a lot of people or something like that i don't know the exact definition yeah it's it's like an idea that replicates itself or something like Mm -hmm. that which basically just means that people latch onto it and pass it around so Although it means something completely different when you get into, like, computer technology and stuff like that and, like, sci-fi. So. Internet subculture. <laughs> yeah, that too, but, yeah. The tree people give the doctor a sapling, or Jabe gives the doctor a sapling cut from yeah. her great-grandfather. <laughs> like, uh. Yeah. And the doctor's like, oh, shoot, didn't bring a gift. Here's some air. <laughs> From my lungs. <laughs> well, it kind of makes sense for it for the tree people, right? Because like they need yeah. the oxygen, but like for all the other guests, like here's some air. I mean, okay, the blue person gives them saliva, <laughs> so yeah, he, he clearly didn't. He didn't come with a gift either. He kind of just made that up on the spot too. So uh, the yeah, doctor wasn't alone. He rose his face. <laughs> uh, although I guess like air fell on the doctor would be. A pretty Unique, big gift, considering he's, he's a Time Lord, time yeah. Lord. <laughs> but not that anyone on that sh- space station even knows that until Jabe scans him. Yeah. Apparently Jabe has this scanner that just tells you everything about a person. <laughs> it looks kind of like a ca- She uses it like a camera later. She's like, smile, doctor. <laughs> then she uh, 
snaps a pick. Yep. So they're introduced to everyone. The repeated meme give everyone this sphere. I forget what they say it is. They're just like, here, take this gift metal of peace sphere. Peace and prosperity, or yeah. something like that. Even the um the what's it? The steward takes one. Well, because they kind of force it on him. Yeah. Like, take this or else. And he's like, or else what? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> or they kill him anyway. Locked and this in. is actually a point where Cassandra is wheeled in and yeah. moisturized by her attendants. attendants. The Cassandra wheels in the supposed lost ostrich egg and uh, a supposed iPod, which is really just a jukebox. Yeah. Apparently, uh, all the historical records got completely mangled somewhere between the year 2005 and the year 5.5 billion. Yeah, it would make billion. sense. That's a lot of time for things to go wrong, so not really <laughs> questioning it here. And she's like, let's play a classic song, and they put on Tainted Love. By, I actually don't know who it's by. I've got no idea. <laughs> Even though it's like... It's one of those 80s one-hit <laughs> wonders. It really is. Yeah, so... <laughs> so there's an entire sequence set to Tainted Love. Yeah, is this the first time we've had licensed music in... No, no, there was that one song by... Also a one-hit wonder, I think. Um, and I, it was a really famous song, but I forget what it's called. It was by one of those mid 60s pop ish groups like the beatles um well, white, I, white something or the other i, I remember the called. um okay so I, actually i do remember there was music in delta and the bannerman but it wasn't it wasn't the originals they played cover versions of yeah. the licensed music in delta and the bannerman yeah no there was one like in the s- it was in the mid '60s, or late '60s, maybe. I forget which doctor. It there was, was that song that uh, Carol Ann Ford was listening to on that radio in the very first episode, <laughs> where she was doing all that weird dancing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. I don't even remember it actually. Wasn't it John Smith and the Common Men? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever, whatever, and the Common Men. I don't know. Mm. But yeah, other than this, the I again really enjoyed the soundtrack to this because again, it's not just like generic Hollywood music which is often like replicated in style in like american tv and i don't know so much about british tv but probably <clears throat> british tv also but I mean, not this depends yeah, it depends Depends on the budget and who you've got composing and what you ask them to compose there's a lot of factors that go into it <clears throat> um but this isn't it so that was nice yeah murray gold who's composed all the music for the reboot yeah interesting tidbit i guess i noticed uh while watching the credits that the makeup designer's name is Davy Jones. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. He uh, probably after, has a locker full of makeup and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, after Will Smith kind of usurped his position on the Flying Dutchman, he had to uh, go find something else to do with his skills. <clears throat> Apparently makeup design. I feel like he'd be really good at it with all those tentacles, though. Grab yeah, a lot of things I at once. I guess you're referencing the uh, pirates, yeah. Davy Jones, and not yeah. just the, the figure. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Rose and the Doctor get separated. Rose, and she like runs out. She's like overwhelmed by all the aliens. And the sight of the Earth about to get destroyed. So she uh, runs into the plumber. The plumber's like, what's up, my home dog? You got to give me permission to speak. Yeah, well, Rose asks um, if she's allowed to be here. And the plumber's like, uh, you have to give me permission to talk to you. She's like, okay. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Lay it on me. And the plumber's pretty happy because apparently no one's ever given her permission to talk to her, be- talk to them before. It's kind of weird. Um, I guess that implies that no one's ever even talked to her, period, since I feel like when you try to talk to her, you'd be like, oh yeah, I gotta give you permission to speak back. Or these people are just talking to her without expecting her to talk back at all. Well, she does talk back without permission, so, you know, maybe she's just broken this before and just does it regularly, but no, you kind of feel bad for her because it's sort of like a caste system kind of thing, and I guess sort of plays into Rose's character, too. Yeah, I mean, kind of. I I, I I liked this character, even though she's only on screen for like two minutes. And she gets killed basically yeah. immediately. Apparently, that scene was written in because, like last week, they were underrunning again. <laughs> <clears throat> Still, kind of set up that you know the the gadget, the spider things are yeah malevolent. So, <laughs> I mean, if you have a mechanical spider, I mean, what did you expect <laughs> that they would be helpful? There's that one from uh, the Matrix, which is helpful to the people who implant it in Neo. So yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Still pretty malevolent to Neo, though. <laughs> anyway, the rose goes off, and the, the plumber notices one of the spiders, and she's like, oh, come here, little guy, and then a bunch of them appear, and she's like, oh my god, there's so many of them, but you only see four of them, so... <laughs> But, it, but she gets killed. So. Yeah, so he's dead. And then Rose goes into what appears to be like a viewing area with all these places for people to sit. But later on, no one goes into the viewing area when the Earth's getting destroyed. So I have no idea what the p- purpose of this room is. Yeah, well, they had a pretty good view from the... Lobby? Other, yeah, the lobby, I guess. <laughs> we kind of mentioned that Jabe, the tree person, was like hitting on the doctor and stuff. And then... Uh, scanned him. She's like, no, I don't believe this. You can't be, uh... And they uh, cut. Yeah. You can't be, uh... And they cut. Something like you that. You can't be a cut. <laughs> anyway, the doctor comes in and is like, what's up, Rose? And she's like, I didn't think everyone would be so alien. The doctor's like... The, she actually does go, didn't think all these aliens would be so alien. The, doc, the doctor's like, like, what did you expect? <laughs> the doc, <laughs> <laughs> the doctor's like, well, good thing I didn't take you to the deep south then. <laughs> well, actually, that was another thing that this the meeting with the plumber set up, which is the she asks Rose, like, hey, who are you? How did you get here? And Rose is like, oh, my God, I don't even know how I got here or who the doctor is or what I'm doing here. So she has this moment of realization and she sort of gets mad at the doctor. And this is where they confront each other. Well, she gets mad at the doctor because she doesn't know who the doctor is. And she's like, I just ran off with you and you brought me here. And the doc's like, it's your choice. Well, yeah, so the doctor's like, your choice, but then he's also, like, really <laughs> really upset because she brings up his home planet, and you yeah. find out later why he's so upset when yeah. she brings it up. Spoiler, it's because it doesn't exist anymore, <laughs> and every one of the people in his species is dead, so... But yeah, they sort of butt heads, I guess, uh, in this scene, and um, Rose is like, well, I can't even contact my family, we're five million years in the future, this kind of sucks, and the doctor... <laughs> I guess gives her a SIM card. <laughs> yeah, the doctor does some jiggery pokery uh, on the on the cell phone, and then now it can apparently work through time. Although that begs the question: like, what time does the cell yeah, what, phone call? Yeah, exactly. To? <laughs> well, Wednesday, obviously. <laughs> Which Wednesday? Uh, this Wednesday. This coming Wednesday or yeah. this past Wednesday? No, this coming Wednesday, 2017. Rose has been gone for 12 <laughs> years at this point for her mom. She's like, don't be late, Rose. <laughs> no, no, her mom's just doing laundry and she's like, hey, Rose. Yeah, when are you coming are you ca- home? Why are you calling me? Yeah, she's like, you never call in the middle of the day. And she's like, uh, love you, bye. Yeah. But this was, I mean, despite, like, how kind of nonsensical and funny it is when you think about it, it's a nice gesture on the doctor's part, and it plays yeah. into the story. So, it's not like one of those, it's not like the sonic screwdriver where you're like, yeah, I don't know if I really want this in the story. I forgot to mention um, all the stuff the sonic screwdriver does in this episode, which is scanning things, opening doors, and I think lo- or raising the sun shield. <laughs> yeah. Or basically just messing with computer systems in general, I guess you could say. Which I guess makes sense. It's kind of what it did in the classic show, too. Actually, it kind of just did anything in the classic <laughs> show, so, yeah. Kind of just does anything here as well. So, they get, well, so the steward dies now. He he dies in the dumbest way possible, dude, because he watches this mechanical spider walk over to the control panel and then push a button. <laughs> And the button causes the sun shield to descend, and the steward panics and tries to, like, voice command the sun shield to go up. And then, you know, I can't help but wonder if there's a button to lower the sun shield. <laughs> Isn't there just a button to raise it? Yeah, I, I thought that, too. And another thing that I thought was weird is, why is there just an unmarked... Bu- I mean, obviously, you probably have to be familiar with the control panel, but why is there just an unmarked button with no, like, safety measure that just lowers the sun shield uh, with one press? Like, come on. <laughs> Pretty big design flaw. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even ask him to like confirm <laughs> anything. <laughs> oh. and, and then yeah, again, like he had enough time to press the probably existent button that just raises it as well, so So yeah, he gets roasted to death, which is a pretty gruesome way to go. Yeah. Maybe he was uh, nothing just compared s- to what happens later. Sorry, continue. Maybe he was just in so much shock that the sun shield would be lowered that he, he couldn't react. <laughs> He's just like, I didn't even know this was a feature. 
We have a sun shield. <laughs> There's a sun? <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't mention that the reason why um, they're blowing up the Earth today is because uh, they, they've run out... The trust that manages the shield around Earth has run out of money yeah, to maintain it, so they're taking it away, so Earth's going to roast. Yeah, because Rose is like... Uh, she asked the doctor, doesn't he death normally take... Uh, however long it takes and the doctor's like yeah but this fund has put millions or billions or trillions or however much into keeping it contained and they finally ran out of money so yeah see i liked that because like yeah the sun doesn't just immediately grow to a huge size overnight it like expands slowly over time so when they're like yeah the sun's gonna expand today and blow up the earth and i was like yeah right and then they explained oh yeah the sun's already expanded but there's like a shield keeping the heat out of earth so yeah it's a pretty nice touch since obviously they wanted to you know, create an episode where the earth is going to get destroyed in 30 minutes so yeah for anyone i didn't know that it would take forever but at least they acknowledge it for the people who do <laughs> also kind of plays into the whole like money theme of this episode as we're gonna yeah. get to later so so Rose and the Doctor end up splitting up again because the Doctor thinks something weird's going on because the space station shakes and he's like, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. So I think the Doctor goes off with um, Jabe. Yeah. And Rose goes to confront Cassandra because she's pretty mad that Cassandra would be the last human and s sort of lose her humanity. Yeah. Well, so you find out from Cassandra that she's not actually the lost human. She's just, quote unquote, the lost person pure human yeah. so i guess there's a lot of like coded racism yeah, themes there in is. this uh story as well yeah, yeah. so cassandra's like i'm the lost pure human all, human all the other ones mingled yeah so it's, it was pretty interesting to me that like well since cassandra is just like a flat sheet you obviously don't really see her as human even though she technically is so it's like all right this person who lost their humanity is like the, the super race human yeah, yeah. well <laughs> is like the the racist one basically yeah. Or the anti-miscegenation one. And then Rose, who obviously is a human, as we know humans, <laughs> is, is like not so. I and mean, she points like, this out to yeah, Cassandra too. Yeah. So she's so I guess the idea is like, if you're racist or anti-race mixing, which is racist, then you're not really a human. Yeah. So that, that's what I got out of it. But maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Yeah, that might be where it's kind of going. And I think they were playing into it with Rose too. She's like, I didn't know all these aliens would be so alien. And the doc's like, yeah. What's your point? And, I, and then I think Rose has this realization, like, I guess this is just how everybody is in the future. I mean, it makes yeah. sense. And then she looks really alien to everyone else <laughs> yeah. also. So she kind of just accepts it. She's like, okay, well. Yeah. But on, on the other hand, this scene, I think you mentioned this before too, or maybe it was before we started recording, but this scene did feel a little out of place because it was like, she's really mad at Cassandra. Yeah, like, it feels kind of heavy handed when... Which I think makes it feel out of place because a lot of the other bits and pieces in the story where this happens are like pretty subtle, like Cassandra p proclaiming to be the last human when she walks in mm -hmm. and proclaiming superiority. Like it's pretty subtle, but then you get to this where they kind of just beat you over the head with it for two minutes, and then they and then they go back to being pretty subtle about it later on. Yeah, I still liked this <laughs> scene though. I think this is where we find out that Cassandra isn't actually like that so it's not like a state that humanity evolved into it's just that she got like tons of surgery so i think this is the scene where you find that out yeah i mean i liked a lot of the realizations that they put in the scene like that i just feel that in terms of what the story was like what ideas and messages the story was trying to convey got a little heavy-handed but yeah i guess didn't re didn't reach and i don't think the show will ever reach the uh two doctors level again with the blood licking but uh <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez i mean i hope not but anyway yeah so the doctor's with jabe in the maintenance corridors and this is where jabe reveals that the doctor is a time lord and the doc and then she says she's sorry for what happened to well, I, I don't the think time she, lords. i don't think she reveals it here because she doesn't actually say time lord until well, she doesn't say time lord but she reveals like, that she knows yeah. who the doctor is and she's sorry about what happened to his planet and the doctor sheds a tear and the wiki's like this is the only time on screen that the ninth doctor ever sheds a tear and i'm like okay it's probably the first time that the I can't think I of think any... I think the wiki also says the first time the Doctor on screen has shed a tear, yeah. too. So that was nice. I, I noticed it, but then I was like, wait, did that really happen, or was that just my imagination? But I, yeah, didn't, go no, back. Did. I didn't go back and check, because it, it, it was really quick. Yeah, I um, saw it, Yeah, and it was really quick, because <laughs> uh, I think it just falls off of Christopher Eccleston's face like immediately. So Yeah. Yeah, they kind of, later on in the reboot, play up the fact that the Doctor has some form of PTSD from the Time War. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, they continue to crawl through the the main <laughs> corridor. <laughs> Obviously, a reference to um, gosh, what was it? The Nissa's write out story. The one where she gets written out. Nissa's write out story was uh, Terminus. Hours. Yeah, Terminus. Obviously, a reference to Terminus. <laughs> yeah, when Tegan <laughs> and uh, Tolo just spend the entire story <laughs> in the maintenance ducts. Uh, well, so they make it to this area with these massive fans that look like they're covered in blood. Yeah, just the typical Doctor Who fans, right? <laughs> massive and covered in blood. <laughs> 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 no, no. That's just us. No, no, no. Speak for yourself. <clears throat> no, fans actually is in, like, fans that... Rotate. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little spider bot in there. The Doctor's, like, trying to do something to it with the sonic screwdriver and then Jabe just kind of reaches out and grabs it with her extendo arms. <laughs> She's like, like, whoops, okay, not just supposed to show those in public. And the doctor's like, I won't tell. Also, we're not in public. We're in the maintenance <laughs> corridors and it's just you and me. <laughs> so they need to get to the other side to um, reactivate the... Well, they don't need to get to the other side yet. That that scene comes later. Because they now they go, ba- they go back to the main area and this is when they reveal that cassandra was in on it because the doctor takes the spider bot back and he sends it to its master and it goes to the robots oh yeah and then later on when cassandra puts her plan into motion that's when they go back into the the duct and they have to go through the fans yeah so the repeated meme are actually just robots robots and the doctor says like well repeated meme that's just an idea so they're just not sure how he i guess this is in line with the classic show where the doctor just deduces things and is right but (laughs) He's like, so the repeated meme or just an idea, an idea as a front for the real villains. <laughs> and he pulls off one of the, the robot hands, which we didn't explain, but they actually looked really cool. They're these giant claws. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the spider thing goes to Cassandra. So. I think Cassandra reveals her. Her master brilliant plan. Brilliant plan. Which um. is to hold everyone hostage and get a bunch of money to fund her next surgery. Yeah, she wanted to also be a hostage because she wanted basically a a payout from, I guess, the National Trust. Yeah. Although if the National Trust doesn't have money to maintain the shield around Earth, I don't really know if she's going to get a very big payout. Well, maybe it was because nobody was left on Earth and they were like, all right, well, we don't want to keep pumping money into this. Maybe they had money, but they just decided to pull the plug, I guess, on the... <laughs> On the Earth, so... Or maybe she wants a payout from the company that runs the space station, which may not be the same as the Trust. Uh, Because I think the Doctor mentions that they, like, move the space station around to different... Actually, not the Doctor, but someone else who mentions they move the space station around to different... Planets that are getting destroyed. (laughs) Well, they just said, like, different artistic events, I Uh, think. Yeah. So. And also the steward makes reference... This is Station 1, but the steward says he's made... He's served on... Or run events on stations 5, 8, and 12 or whatever. Yeah. And he's never had problems. Kind so. of weird. It's not really an artistic event. It's more just like a natural event. So, Yeah, but art can be anything. <sighs> um, so I'm told. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, yeah. So Cassandra's like, well, I have a teleporter, even though I know it's forbidden. Bye. Yeah. Which they bring up yeah. earlier. It was yeah, right when the Doctor and Rose showed up, they were like, teleporters are forbidden. So it's nice that they kind of threw that in and didn't have it be out of nowhere here. Yeah, they brought it up because the TARDIS is obviously a teleportation device. Yeah. So, um, But she's like, haha, gonna use my teleporter, which she does. And, okay, so basically she's deactivated all the sun shields. Oh, yeah, Rose is stuck in the observatory room thing, yeah. by the way. Yeah. So the Doctor's like, I gotta, gotta, gotta save Rose. Um, and the, the sun shield's descending and burning everything so the doctor saves her. And then when Cassandra activates her plan, now the sun shield starts cracking. I guess it has like a self-repair feature, but <laughs> I guess it doesn't do that unless you activate it. Or the robot's deactivated the self-repair mm-hmm. and that's why it's cracking and it's always in a state of repairing itself. Maybe. I don't know. But the doctor and Jabe have to go... Um, fix it so they go back into the fan room and now the fans are going really quick because it's really hot so it's trying to pump a lot of air and then five thousand degrees outside i think is what they say so you can uh you can pull this lever and it'll slow the fans down but you have to keep the lever down to slow the fans down yeah so obviously one of them has to stay behind and jabe decides to do it and then the doctor takes the longest time ever to cross through all the fans 
yeah, Jabe actually burns up before he gets all the way across. So the last fan is going really fast. And actually, one thing I noticed is that even with the lever pulled down, the fan still went pretty fast. Yeah, but they were going slow enough where the Doctor had, like, multiple opportunities to cross through the fans while he was standing in front well, of them. Well, it's a scary thing, so... You when know, has the Doctor racers. ever been scared? He faced Davros and, like, st- <laughs> stared him in the eye and was like, kill me. Yeah, well, this is the ninth Doctor who's actually getting character development. Okay, that's fair. You know what? That's fair. <laughs> but then we get some really, uh, you know... Like last week, we get some garbage early 2000s slow motion. I, oh, I liked the last part where Jabe is already burned up and the last one's going super fast and the doctor's like, gulp. I mean, okay, look, the scene wasn't bad. I'm just making fun of the fact that the slow motion itself was kind of garbage. Mm, yeah, I didn't think so, though. I thought it was pretty good. No, I it liked was it. really bad. Well, I mean, like, technically, I guess. Yeah, in that's a, what In I'm a technical about. sense yeah. of it, but I still liked it. Yeah, it has a weird like, kind of charm to it, like the rest of these episodes. <clears throat> like those sound effects from last week. <laughs> <laughs> those didn't show up this week, unfortunately. No, no. But the doctor somehow just passes through it. He, like, closes his eyes and, like, says a little prayer, and he's like, Well, I hope I don't <laughs> die here. Kind of suck for Rose. <laughs> please, 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 please. Okay, no. Um, I think, because I know that the bad wolf is the overarching plot of this yeah. season and they actually mentioned it in, in like a really really quick passing piece of dialogue yeah um, max rebo knockoff mentions it he's like yeah. this is the bad wolf scenario um and i think that this scene might have something to do with it but i'm not sure and don't spoil it because i don't know well that musical theme is called the bad wolf theme mm. yeah yeah i actually <laughs> knew that which is why i thought that mm-hmm. so i'm guessing this has something to do with that perhaps <laughs> it's pretty likely but i guess i'll see yeah, you'll see. When it all comes to fruition at the end of the season, I think is when it happened. Well, the ninth Doctor only has this <laughs> yes, season, <it's> so <laughs> unless they continue it into the next season. And the last episode, I think, is called Bad Wolf, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> or was it the last episode or the, the second to last episode? No, the final know. two episodes are a two-parter, and one of them yeah. is named Bad Wolf, so... Yeah. So yeah, the Doctor pulls the lever, and uh, I guess it activates the self-repair mechanism or something. Rose is saved. Um, most of the guests are also saved. Yeah, the blue guy's been roasted. <laughs> he's just... Go- he, like, starts screaming, and then you cut to later when the doctor shows up in the room, and he's just gone. Yeah. Uh, his chair is there, but he's gone, and his, like, attendants are weeping or cleaning his chair. It could be either. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to assume he's dead. I think he's dead. I think he's gone. The doctor goes over to tell the tree people that Jay burned up, which I feel is... <laughs> Even more gruesome if you're a tree person. Yeah, probably. And the doctor's like, well, if there's if Cassandra used a teleporter, there has to be some... Link. Link, I guess. Which also kind of seems like one of those things where he just deduces it somehow and <laughs> is right. It's in the ostrich egg. Yeah, it's in the ostrich egg, which I thought was nice. I didn't see it coming. Yeah, yeah. So he smashes the egg and, and brings Cassandra back. And now since the temperatures are way higher than they were before, Cassandra starts to dry up. And yeah. she's like, help me, I'm dying, I'm dying. And, and Rose is like, aren't you going to help her doctor? And the doctor's like, nope. Yeah, the doctor's like, everybody has their time. Cassandra says she's lived for like 2,000 years, so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's extended her life beyond what it should be, um, even though this is like the year 5 billion or whatever. She screams about, uh, she's too young and she's dying. And it's like, uh, <laughs> you're um, like 2,000, buddy. Well, this actually plays into something earlier, because... Um, right at the beginning when Rose first sees the Earth, the do- she's like, so re- you're here to save the Earth, right? Like how you saved it in my time. And the doctor's like, nope, some things just have their own time to die. So that's what he says again here when- with Cassandra dying. I feel like the doctor's also taking a break from saving Earth this week. He's like, for once, I can just let the Earth get blown up because it's supposed to be blown up this <laughs> yeah. time. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess that's the idea, but then... There's also the other times where the Doctor saved Earth where it's like, was it supposed to be destroyed then? Like, I don't Yeah, know. but I mean, the reason this time it's supposed to be destroyed, there's no one on Earth yeah. anymore. They yeah, evacuated no, I everybody. Yeah, I get that. But like, they even returned the Earth to 2005 form with the continents. Yeah, I think they said they never let it change. So, well, or it was like, something like that, because yeah. Rose is like... Shouldn't the continents have moved? And the doctor says either they didn't let it change or they moved it back. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I get that. But it, it just makes you think, like, what about all the other times the Earth 
could have been destroyed and wasn't. Was it yeah. supposed to be destroyed then? But That's fair. I don't but know. I don't know. The doctor always is there to save the little guy. Well, not necessarily the little guy. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, Cassandra is supposedly dead, but um, spoiler alert, she's not. Yeah, I'm not sure how I you. Dylan she comes told me back. Before. Yeah, she comes back, but not sure how she she survives it because she kind of just explodes. Yeah, it's kind of gruesome too. Yeah. Some, CG body parts fly by Rose and the Doctor. I'm not sure how she comes back either. I just remember her coming back and I remember being like, wait a minute, didn't she die? Well, her brain, she has like a brain in a vat kind of thing underneath her stretched out body. Yeah. So I guess that's still alive. Yeah, that's true. So, although, I don't know, it doesn't seem like she has a heart anywhere. So something in the frame must be pumping the blood too. And as long as that survived, then I... I guess... (laughs) She said her next operation is to have her blood bleached, which sounds awful. Also sounds like it might kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then if she survives like 708 surgeries or whatever, she can probably survive this one. So When she's talking with Rose, she's like, you could have a, some surgery. You've got a little bit of a chin there. And I'm like, Rose, there's a lot more going on than you, Cassandra. A lot more than just the chin. <laughs> <laughs> so then they kind of just leave. They don't show them leaving or anything. They just sort of get back to Rose's time. Yeah, so the doctor says, well, so now that you've seen how dangerous it is, do you still want to travel with me? And Rose is like, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I really like the scene where she comes back and she's like, she realizes how, like, everything's not permanent, which obviously everyone knows that in the back of their minds, but just seeing, like, everything get destroyed and there's no more humans left and the last, quote-unquote, last human is is Cassandra and, <laughs> and the Earth is getting destroyed and everything you know is getting destroyed and then coming back and being like, Wow. I can see how that would be an overwhelming thing, and I, I really liked the scene where she's just looking at everyone in the crowd. Yeah, there's a lot of character development for Rose in this story where she's wondering if she made the right choice going with the Doctor. Yeah, um, which, Even at the end, when she, cause she doesn't give a definitive answer whether she's going to continue traveling with the Doctor or not, although the next time trailer immediately spoils it anyway, so yeah. who cares? Which I actually <clears throat> liked this, because like I mentioned last week, uh, I thought she made the decision too quick, mm-hmm. so it's nice that they actually had more to do yeah. Um, with that idea in this episode. Uh, huh. Instead of just like with the other companions, like in the classic show, they'd either just join the doctor, just like, yep, totally joining, uh, like Dodo maybe. <laughs> or they might have some hesitation about it, but then they just completely throw it out the window in the next episode. So, <laughs> Yeah, and the doctor uh, reveals that he's the last of the Time Lords, that uh, his planet got blown up. Yeah, he's like, it got blown to dust and uh, rock, and I was like, that's pretty much what it was to begin with. <laughs> if invasion of time is any uh, indication. indication. But no, yeah, it got destroyed. And he says he's the last Time Lord, yeah, so kind of weird, though, because the Time Lords can, like, travel through time, so there might be past ones, um, you know, ahead of... I always thought that was weird, too, but they do kind of explain it away later, basically... They time lock the time war, so anybody who was involved in the time war is stuck in the time lock, so they, they have to be only within when the time war was huh. fought, fighting in the time war. And the reason why the Doctor escapes is he... He's a <laughs> well, maverick. Spoilers. Okay, so, well, yeah, I guess it's nice that they explain it. it. Sounds like a pretty complicated explanation, though. Yeah, but, I mean, also, to be fair, you kind of have to have a complicated explanation because, like you said... Time Lords can travel in time, <laughs> so you got to kind of block that off somehow. Yeah, but it is a nice, whether it makes sense or not, it's sort of a nice end to the episode because they've been hinting at it and the Doctor was obviously distraught about it through the episode, so. Yeah. And they go off with Rose. They go to get trying, chips. Yeah, they go to get fish and chips, so. Doctor's got no money, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure it's a contradiction. And- to previous doctors, Seventh Doctor was just walking around with that bag of outdated Loaded. money that he handed to Ace. He's like, here's some money. And she's like, this money is... I don't understand this money. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the, the old system money. Yeah. yeah, I don't understand that money either. <laughs> right I can post that Ace. chart about it again, but it's probably the most complicated monetary system I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank God the U.S. system is pretty easy. Thank God, pretty much every system on Earth now is pretty easy yeah. to understand. Yeah. Anyway, that's where it ends. I really liked this episode. Like, really enjoyed it. Because there was a lot of character development, I guess, throughout. And even all the characters like Jabe and even the uh, plumber were actually pretty interesting and, mm-hmm. and enjoyable to watch. 
And I'm kind of thinking that they might... There's a lot for the Doctor and Rose, too, so I'm kind of thinking they might have jammed a lot of the character development and moments into this story and aren't really going to have any for a couple episodes at least. I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope they can keep it up, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. Yeah, probably <laughs> shouldn't. I have no idea. Yeah, I kind of hope that they... They don't necessarily, in my opinion, have to do character development for both in every single no, episode. No, they don't. I think it was nice that they did in this episode, but mm -hmm. I think as long as they do at least one character yeah. gets a little bit of development in every episode, I would be fine with that. Yeah, and they don't even have to do it to the extent that this episode did, because this episode was a lot, like almost every scene with the mm -hmm. Doctor and Rose, which was which was almost which was actually I think every scene. Yeah. So they don't have to do it to that extent, but maybe a, a few scenes in each episode would be nice, but. Again, who knows? Yeah, and some of that might be... Uh, the reason why this had so much might also be making up a little bit for last week. Because last week there wasn't a lot of scenes with the Doctor and Rose together. A lot of it was the Doctor running into Rose while he was trying to solve the problem. Yep. Until the end of the episode when they're talking, quote-unquote, with yeah. the nesting consciousness. Well, I can definitely see now how a lot of people say that new Doctor Who is a lot more character-driven than, mm -hmm. than the old series. And I kind of got that in Rose, but... At the same time, I was like, not really, but here, like, yeah, really. <clears throat> yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see if they keep that up for this season and the next couple seasons. Um, there's also a preview of the next episode, which yeah. is in 1860. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is just a coincidence, but I thought it was nice how, because um, when Doctor Who was first created, it was supposed to be like science slash science fiction and the historical stuff. So this was sort of the science fiction episode. Mm -hmm. And then next week is going to be the quote unquote historical. Because obviously, even based on the preview, there's still some supernatural stuff, yeah. which most historical serials did have supernatural things. It's actually intentional on Russell T. Davies's part. He wanted the first season of Doctor Who not to be super out there like some of the later seasons of Classic Who Got. So yeah. he, he's very intentional about the fact that this season, pretty much every episode revolves around Earth or humans in some way. Mm -hmm. Because he wants the first season, at least, to bring in new viewers. He wants it to feel a little more grounded. And then also it's intentional. He went to the future in episode two and then to the past in episode three and they're in the present in episode one because he wanted to, at the beginning of the season, to get the whole kind of gauntlet of where they could go with the show so people yeah. understand, like, we can go both forward and backward. Yeah, sure. And it's also kind of the <laughs> opposite of what they did way back at the beginning of the series because first they go back to the past and then they mm -hmm. go, well, they go to Scarrow next, but, you know, <laughs> sort of a sci-fi setting. Yeah. So. I mean, this formula would prove to be pretty successful for Russell T because it brought in a lot of viewers and, and Stephen Moffat would emulate it later in the most recent season. In fact, a new companion joins and they do the same thing. They do present, future, and then past. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's all intentional. I mean, they, Russell T has been trying to put this reboot together for a couple of years, so he's had quite a few, <laughs> <laughs> quite a few months to think about where he wanted this season to go and how he wanted it to work, so put a lot more thought into it probably than JNT ever did, especially in those later seasons. <laughs> That's not a slide on JNT. I mean, I, I totally understand that he wanted to move on to something else. I don't remember next week's episode at all, but I do remember that Charles Dickens is involved somehow. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the Bad Wolf references. So I haven't rewatched this season since I know the resolution to that plot arc anyway um before we end just a reminder that we we recorded a new episode zero that we sort of explains what we do yeah we formally released last week but probably by the time this episode goes out i'll have backdated it so that it appears first in the podcast feed before episode one that way people who scroll all the way back to the beginning of the podcast which some people do. I know I like, I like to do that when I find a new podcast. They'll see episode zero first instead of episode one, because episode zero is a way better introduction to the show than episode one is. Yeah. So. Uh, so if this is like your first time listening to us, maybe check that out. It sort of just explains what this podcast is. And also where to yeah, start and where, where to, to find start. us. Yep. And how to contact us, which is a good segue into the end of the episode, which is that you can email us at the doctor at decorativevegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry relance. Angry relance. Rants. Your thoughts on angry ants. <laughs> angry ants. Your thoughts on angry ants. And you can find us on YouTube, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. All at Trust Your Doctor. Leave a rating if you liked the show. 
Check us on Facebook, trust your doctor, like us on Facebook, also check us on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next time we're watching The Unquiet Dead. But until then, the end. <laughs>